So Ryan Coogler dropped a bombshell this holiday weekend. He let everyone know Wakanda Forever, what we saw in theaters, was not his original plan. His initial plan was to make a father-son story. This according to an interview he had in the New York Times. Here's an excerpt from Deadline Magazine. Ryan Coogler has revealed the complicated backstory on what his film, Black Panther Wakanda Forever, was supposed to be before the tragic death of this film's original star Chadwick Boseman. Speaking to the New York Times, Kugler said the original intent was to make the film center about a relationship of fathers and sons. The struggle would have dealt with T'Challa's five-year absence after the blip, the Thanos-induced extermination that saw half of the universe's population reduced to dust, only to be brought back later. The sequel still would have had Prince Namor, the Submariner, as its villain, but T'Challa would have been tied to his love interest Nakia, who gave birth to a son, Tosant, while he was away. Dealing with that new reality would have been the focus even as the Black Panther battled Namor. It was, what are we going to do about the blip, Kugler said to the Times. That was the challenge. It was absolutely nothing like what was made. It was going to be a father-son story from the perspective of a father because the first movie had been a father-son story from the perspective of the sons. Kugler continued, in the original script, T'Challa was a dad who'd had this forced five-year absence from his son's life, Kugler said. The first scene was an animated sequence. You hear Nakia talking to Tosant. She says, tell me what you know about your father. You realize that he doesn't know his dad was Black Panther. He's never met him. And Nakia is remarried to a Haitian dude. Then we cut to reality and it's the night that everybody comes back from the blip. You see T'Challa the kid for the first time. Then it cuts ahead three years and he's essentially co-parenting. Kugler continued, we had some crazy scenes in there for Chad, man. Our code name for the movie was Summer Break. And the movie was about a summer that a kid spends with his dad for his eighth birthday. They do a ritual where they go out into the bush and have to live off the land. But something happens and T'Challa has to go save the world with his son on his hip. That was the movie. Yeah, great story indeed. So as you can see, this is a far cry from the feminist drivel they put in theaters. Kugler wanted to make this movie about a black father raising his black son, grooming him to be a man, a leader, and a king. Instead, we got this queen mother goddess nonsense with two Nancy Drews and a baby mama raising a fatherless child. Oh, and a same-sex romance. In short, we went from Black Panther being the standard of what the black community should be to a film celebrating the failures of what we are. The dream was reverse engineered into a nightmare. Anyway, I digress. But folks, this is huge. This is a major confession on the part of Ryan Coogler. Basically, by coming out and telling everyone what Black Panther Wakanda Forever was supposed to be versus what it actually was is a huge admission of failure. If the movie had accomplished everything that he set out to accomplish, there would be no reason to bring this up. I think he's letting us know what we saw wasn't his plan. He wanted to do something different. He wanted to do something better. He, and I'm only speculating, wanted to recast T'Challa. And the fact that he's going on record outlining his original plan says as much. He's saying, hey folks, you think Wakanda forever sucked? So did I. And I don't blame him. Look at the results. For starters, it's a critical failure. Look at the Metacritic score. It's terrible. Oh, and by the way, if you want an honest assessment of a movie, aside from coming to the layman's journal, of course, use Metacritic. Sites like Rotten Tomatoes are an access media rag. They have no integrity. Their positive ratings are for sale. But getting back to the uh, movie, Wakanda Forever is also a commercial failure. But layman, what do you mean? It's made more than $700 million at the box office. Okay. Here's a box office receipt from about two weeks ago. Now that $730 million number looks pretty good. And for most movies, it is. But when you're talking about a sequel to a movie that made $1.3 billion, that's a massive fall off. Even more when you consider the increase in the production and marketing budget from the previous film. And when you factor in inflation, that $1.3 billion back then is more like $1.6 today. So Disney, and I'm speculating, spent twice as much on the sequel that gave them half of the return of the previous film. And that's even worse when you consider the fact that sequels tend to do better than their predecessors. So they were probably expecting this film to do somewhere in the neighborhood of two billion. 
but instead they're going to get significantly less than that. But I don't necessarily blame Coogler for the film's failure. Chadwick's death put him in a bad spot, which was only complicated by the fact that Kevin Feige, the head of Marvel Studios, declaring that Chadwick Boseman's role as T'Challa wouldn't be recast. So even though he's credited for writing the movie, it wasn't an original concept. I think a lot of what he wrote was heavily influenced by someone from corporate. I'm sure Ryan Coogler was told what to put in the script, what was and what was not permitted. Because so much of this film is in lockstep with all the other BS we've seen from Phase 4 of the MCU. Here's what I mean. Phase 4 has been one colossal failure after another. I made a video outlining everything wrong, be sure to check it out. But yeah, with the exception of Spider-Man No Way Home, everything failed. But even when you talk about Spider-Man, look at what all it took for that movie to be a success. You had three variations of Spider-Man, plus all of their old villains from the Spider-Verse, Doctor Strange, and rumors of Venom and the Vulture being in the film. Technically, Venom was in the movie, but he was a post credit scene. He didn't really have a role. So it took all of that novelty for it to be a success. But even still, when you watch it again away from the novelty, it's just a basic movie. As a matter of fact, it kind of sucks. Aside from underperforming, a lot of their projects were just hard to watch. She-Hulk, Miss Marvel, Moon Knight, Eternals, Black Widow. Some of the worst projects I ever seen. Now, there are two reasons for that. One is MCU fatigue. Notice I didn't say superhero fatigue, I said MCU fatigue. Because projects like The Boys, Invincible, and The Batman are held in high regard. It's the MCU's rendition of the superhero genre that people have gotten tired of. Their movies are overly predictable and hyper-simplistic, and the market is saturated with them, and people have outgrown the shtick. The second reason is... I'm gay. I'm gay. Homosexual. I like men. Sexually. You see, people want to be entertained when they see a movie. They don't want to go to some woke propaganda being shoved down their throats. And that's what I mean when I say what Ryan Coogler wrote must have been heavily influenced by Kevin Feige or someone high within Marvel Studios. Because Ryan Coogler doesn't write like that. If you've seen Creed, another film by Coogler, there was a father-son relationship between Creed and Rocky Balboa. As the article says, he had the same theme with the original Black Panther, and he was going to do the same in Wakanda Forever. So he's big on that. So why now? Why is Ryan Coogler telling us that what we saw wasn't what he had in mind? I think it's because he's trying to clear his name. The secret is out. He knows that we know Wakanda Forever was a shit show. And he wants us to know that he's still a good filmmaker. That this is Disney's mess, not his. I think he's throwing shade, giving them a passive aggressive dig. But it also appears that his run at Disney is coming to an end. There doesn't seem to be any future plans for another Black Panther or Wakanda sequel. Now, there were rumors of him directing Secret Wars, but that doesn't appear to be happening. So maybe he's giving them a middle finger as he walks out the door. Who knows, I can only speculate. But more importantly, him being honest about what Wakanda Forever was supposed to be about highlights the heavy-handed agenda within Marvel Studios. It also confirms what many leading directors have said about working with the MCU, or the possibility of working with the MCU. That you're just a hired hand, you have no creative liberty. Marvel Studios is a machine and you're nothing more than a cog in said machine. And as a side note, to my recast T'Challa folk, y'all must be feeling good right now. No hate, I tap my hat to you, you warned us. I wish we'd have listened and signed the petition. I wish I'd have listened and signed the petition. Now look at us, frustrated on missing out on what could have been. So big ups to y'all, you saw the writing on the wall. So if you like this video, please give it a like and leave a comment in the comment section and share the link on your social media platforms. And if you are new to my channel, please subscribe and turn on that notification bell. That way you'll get alerts every time I upload new content. This is The Layman's Journal. Thanks for stopping by. I'm out.